the blockchain, Web 3.0, crypto, metaverse space, whatever you want to call it, is absolutely exploding. So many people are flocking into this space to build the next generation of apps. There's an absolute gold rush, and all these people need to hire technical talent to take advantage of this opportunity, which means there's a huge demand for Web 3.0 developers, making it one of the highest paying fields in tech with an average salary of $155,000 per year in the United States. But if you want to capitalize on this opportunity, then you need the right skills in order to satisfy this demand. So this video, I'm going to talk about the top skills that you need to know to become a Web 3.0 developer. I'm going to talk about this as a blockchain developer myself who works this technology on a daily basis and have been around this space for a long time. You know, I taught myself these skills from scratch. I've helped lots of other people learn them and go on to become real world blockchain developers. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to master blockchain step-by-step -step, start to finish, then head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so let's get into this. So like I was saying, there's a huge demand for tech talent in this space. I see it all the time, and I've been on every single side of this problem. I've been a freelancer who's been hired for the right, you know, Web 3.0 skills, and now I'm on the other side of things where I'm hiring developers, and I know the exact skills that I'm looking for to accomplish specific tasks. So I'm well acquainted with the skills that you need in order to do this, and what I want to focus on in this video is actually the minimum skills that you need in order to break into this industry and then sort of rank them in importance. So like, you know, if you just got this, this is going to be good enough. But then if you have this is the next thing you should focus on, that's even better. And the next thing is even better. The next thing is even better. Because the reality is you're not just going to probably go in and learn this stuff and become a top tier expert without real work experience. But the good news is you don't need to do that. You just need to get good enough to get your foot in the door somewhere and then get paid to learn everything else as you start working. And so that's exactly what I'm going to talk about in this video. Trust me, this strategy works. This is a new field and a little bit of blockchain knowledge goes a long way. So let's get into it. All right, so the number one skill that you want to focus on first if you're trying to become a Web 3.0 developer and break in the industry is smart contract development. All right, so why is that? Well, if you learn to create smart contracts, you're gonna learn to create the core uh, components of some of those popular blockchain use cases like cryptocurrency tokens, NFTs, decentralized finance applications, you know, metaverse apps. And while you're doing this, you'll be learning a programming language, all right, that you can use to go on to create applications. That's what smart contracts let you do. And then while you're doing this, you're also going to learn the fundamentals of how blockchains work because that's that's knowledge you're going to acquire while you're creating these smart contracts. And honestly, if you just learn this skill and nothing else, you could then go on and get hired as a job. Now, having other skills will definitely increase the likelihood that you'll do that, but you can already provide value to somebody by just having this one skill, one programming language to get started. So what programming languages do you need to know to create smart contracts? Um, so, you know, like I said, these are uh, the building blocks of centralized applications, and there's different programming languages you can learn, but by far the best one to start with is Solidity, okay? Uh, this is a language primarily used for writing Ethereum smart contracts, and I say by far the best one is because it has the most rich developer ecosystem, and it has the most applications out there aside of other programming languages. You can learn something like Rust, develop smart contracts for Solana. If you're just dead set on wanting to learn Solana and going that path, um, you can do that. Now, I'm going to say it's harder to learn Rust as a beginner because it's a lower level programming language. It's a lot easier to learn Solidity. Trust me, I've seen this. And Solana is a newer ecosystem with more risk and less learning resources if you get stuck, okay? Now, Solidity, on the other hand, is a way more beginner-friendly language, and you don't have to just use it on Ethereum. There's all these other EVM-compatible chains like Binance Smart Chain, Avalanche, Polygon, Ethereum Layer 2s, etc., etc., with lower gas fees, different user bases, where you can create applications to put on these networks. All right, so that's skill number one. And beyond this, um, you know, you can add these other skills on. They're going to increase the likelihood that you can provide value in the workplace for Web 3.0. Now, I think the next best, there's a couple of different ways you could go, but I think the next best skill is basically just how to write tests for the smart contracts themselves. Because what that's going to do is introduce to you a, another programming language, all right, like JavaScript, maybe, or even Python, where you can just test out the behavior for your smart contracts and make sure that they work. The reason I say that's the next best skill is because, you know, smart contract developers are the most lucrative skills in the blockchain field. And if you learn that next skill, you can perform a vital task, which is make sure that your smart contracts are secure uh, before they go to the next phase of auditing and launching and all type of stuff. This will require you to learn a second programming language, like I was saying, maybe JavaScript, maybe Solidity, also a smart contract development framework so you can organize your contracts and write tests inside of them like Hardhat or Truffle, for example. And so within this same point, I know it's not really the same skill, but in addition to writing tests, 
uh, while you're doing this step, you can write actual scripts for your smart contracts. So you can write tests to make sure that they work before you put them out there in the wild. But then you can write you can write scripts that actually interact with your smart contracts, whether they're on your development machine or out in the wild. So let's say you created a smart contract that was you know to do a trading bot or something like that. Like you've got the smart contract out in the wild in the blockchain, but then you have this script that can actually interact with the smart contract without using a website, without using a you know MetaMask wallet or something, where you can run automated tasks on your computer uh, with code. And that's why this is another powerful skill in and of itself. Your tests are basically just scripts that make sure your contracts work, and the scripts are actual execution scripts that can do things once your con- for your th- contracts once they're once they're live. All right, so the next skill that you need to learn if you're going to be a valuable Web three pointer developer is some kind of front end development. All right, so what do I mean by that? Well, actually creating websites that talk to smart contracts. So I've got an example pulled up on my screen here. So this is like a website at uniswap.org where you can actually use Uniswap, the application, the smart contracts that live on the blockchain itself. So I'll break down how this works in a minute, what you need to know. But what I'll say about this is you don't even necessarily need to know front-end development in order to get hired as a blockchain developer. Like I was saying before, uh, you know, just knowing how to create smart contracts is enough to become a, a Solidity developer all right, at a job somewhere because somebody else might be able to handle the front-end stuff. But you're going to increase... Uh, the likelihood that you're going to get hired if you have some kind of front-end knowledge, that you're going to be more versatile, that you can touch the stack, but you still want to focus on your core competency initially being with front-end develop. sorry, with, with smart contract development with Solidity, okay? So what would you need to know in order to do this? Well, you need to know some sort of modern uh, JavaScript framework like React.js, for example. Uh, it reacts a component-based library that lets you create interactive uni- user interfaces primarily on the web, Okay. Um, so definitely know JavaScript, a second programming language, and also React.js, which is the framework. So programming language is JavaScript, framework is React, React is not a programming language. Um, and then Web3.js, uh, or some sort of client-side side library with JavaScript that talks to the blockchain, like Web3.js or Ethers.js, okay? So these are both basically uh, libraries that turn your front-end application into a blockchain application. So if you go to Uniswap, um, you know, how does Uniswap talk to the blockchain? Well, it uses a special library to do that because apps don't just talk to the blockchain out of the box. They need a special library to do it. That's what Web3.js does. That's what, you know, Ethers.js does. So you want to pick something like this and learn those so you can do front-end development. Now, one one direction you can go with this if you want to break in the industry is you you can get a job as a front-end developer at a blockchain company, okay? So, but even if you decide to go to that track and you don't want to be a smart contract developer, you should be a web 3 pointer developer that focuses on front-end. I still recommend going on the track of learning how to create some smart contracts, okay? Even just some basic ones uh, so that you'll just get that amount of knowledge um, you know, to see how the blockchain works, to see how smart contracts work. And then you can spend a majority of your time focusing on your front end skills to write applications that talk to those. And conversely, if you're going to just become a smart contract developer, I would just learn enough front end development to create a basic user interface for your own smart contracts. They don't have to look pretty. You don't have to be a designer. They don't have to be super sophisticated. But if you can do basic front end tasks, it's really going to increase the odds that you can uh, get hired to provide value to a bigger team. All right, so the last major skill that's going to be in demand for Web 3.0 developers is IPFS. Okay, so what is that? This is kind of a bonus skill. This is not necessarily required if you want to become a Web 3.0 developer, but if you know this, it's going to really increase the likelihood that you're going to get hired, okay? So IPFS is the Interplanetary File System. That's what it stands for, okay? Basically, it's a distributed file system that lets you put you know, files out there on the web, on a decentralized web, okay, web 3.0. You don't want to put pictures and, you know, music and movies on a blockchain. It's not going to work. So you need to put them somewhere else. That's what IPFS is. It's it's a decentralized file storage system uh, where it's kind of like a blockchain, but it's not really, okay? So um, what? how could you learn IPFS? Well, basically, you could just go through, well, I have tutorials on my YouTube homepage. You can definitely check those out. But uh, basically... You want to create something that uses IPFS. The easiest thing to do is just to create like an NFT project. So create an NFT and then all the pictures for the NFT, put those on IPFS and then get back the hash from the IPFS uh, location of the file and then store that into your NFT smart contract. And then boom, there you go. You got a smart contract on the blockchain that points to IPFS and you'll see how to use it. You can take that a step beyond that and you could deploy a website to IPFS. So you could build a front end and react something like that. And then instead of deploying that live to a web, to a web server, like, you know, 
on whatever hosting company you want to use. Instead, you can put it on IPFS where there's no hosting company. It's just out there. And then you can point, you know, a domain, uh, maybe like an unstoppable domain or something like that to the actual IPFS location. And then you have a fully decentralized application. Now, another thing you can do is actually have an application that uploads files to IPFS in some way. That's another thing that you can do. We got a tutorial on the YouTube homepage that shows you how to do that as well. But if you know IPFS, it's really going to increase your higher ability for the Web 3.0 stack because it's another thing you're going to have familiarity with that can provide value to whoever's, you know, paying you. All right, so the last major skill I want to talk about is really a meta skill, all right? And that's if you get to the job and there's something you don't quite know, just be upfront that you're willing to learn it. And then when you get on the job, actually follow through and present that willingness and learn the things you need to know to do your job. Because at the end of the day, like there's no real way to synthesize what it's like to have professional working experience, okay? Uh, without having work experience. So how do you get, you know, work experience outside the workplace? Well, you create your own project, okay? And that's the best that you can do because you'll get pretty close. But then you have to just take that leap to get your foot in the door. And once you're in the door, there's gonna be lots of stuff you don't know. Be, be open, be teachable, and be hungry to learn and do your job well, okay? So you're gonna have to learn new things, you know, add the, on the job. We see this happen all the time. And that's what you should expect. So, Hope you like this list. These are the top skills that I see in the marketplace that every Web3 developer should know if they want to increase the likelihood that they're going to get hired, okay? So, I mean, you you could really just start with smart contracts and stop there, but keep going on down this list to increase the odds that you'll get that first job. So if you want to learn these skills, you go to my YouTube homepage. You can find those free courses there. Uh, I've put them out there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those videos and you want to take the next step, uh, or maybe you want to stop this video, take a master shortcut, just start right at the beginning from what you need to know from start to finish, then head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You know, you don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I got for today. As always, smash that like button down below, subscribe to this channel. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.